Have you ever woken up in the morning and you just feel like you've been hit by a train and you just want to go back to sleep, but you can't either because you've got work commitments, you've got your kids, you've got to get up to, or something like that. You've just got to get up, but you feel awful. Well, in this video, I'm going to be sharing my top three tips on how I sleep like a baby. <laughs> Not quite, because I don't cry in the night. But um, yeah, I consistently get like eight to 10 hours sleep every night and I wake up feeling like refreshed and yeah, just restored. So I've also got some bonus tips at the end of the video. So stick around to the end and I guarantee at least one of them is gonna improve your sleep quality. And if it doesn't, leave the video a dislike and you never have to see me again. And don't worry, you don't need like an aura ring. You don't need like a temperature controlled mattress. You don't need any of that. I prefer a more holistic approach and something that all of you guys can implement. My first tip is something that I call the three, two, one rule. Now I didn't invent this. I can't remember where I heard it, but it really resonated with me. And the three, two, one rule, some of you might have guessed, essentially means no eating three hours before bed, no drinking two hours before bed, and no blue light or artificial light one hour before bed. Now you don't have to be that rigid with it, but it's really a good guideline. Now I'd say three hours of food before bed as a minimum, I'd say like four to five is gonna be more optimal and you're gonna feel better, but at least three hours, no heavy meals before bed, because sometimes I'm sure you've had the feeling where you eat like a heavy meal late at night, maybe you've got in from work late, you've had sports commitments or you've just binged at, at night time and you wake up and it still feels like you've got food sitting there like it hasn't properly digested and that's because it hasn't it's quite hard to sleep efficiently and digest your food because your stomach acid isn't as strong late at night it all links into the circadian rhythm so the sun Later on at night, our digestion just isn't as uh, efficient and effective. And yeah, in terms of fluids, try to keep it two hours. If you need a little sip, like an hour or so before bed or right before bed, that's cool because you don't want to be dehydrated either. But if you're drinking loads and loads, then obviously you're going to need to get up and urinate, pee in the night a few times. So try your best just to keep fluid intake very minimal and definitely no like caffeinated drinks before bed. And then blue light, this is a big culprit of a lot of sleep disorders and issues because essentially what blue light does is it tricks your body into thinking that it's daytime. See, when this sun's up, there's full uh, spectrum light. There's all different uh, waveforms of light. You've got blue light, you've got infrared, you've got all these different forms. But when we're seeing these screens, it's just pure blue light and it's really bright and essentially I just had to stop filming quickly because there was a car going past. But essentially, these screens or uh, bright, <laughs> bright, bright fluorescent lights, especially like overhead lights, all these LED ones, they really mess up our circadian rhythm. So it tricks our body into thinking it's time to be alert. So if you're viewing like screens or you have bright light bulbs and more white light, that's higher in the blue light. Whereas like a more yellowy red light is going to have less blue light. So you want to keep that to a minimum, at least an hour before bed. So this links in nicely to the second point, which is blue lights. Now, if you haven't already heard, it went pretty viral, like how harmful blue lights are. People like Andrew Huberman and uh, other scientists talking about the harmful and detrimental effects of blue light. So it may have been news to you, my first point. It may have been the first time you're hearing it, but essentially blue light, it just disrupts mitochondrial health. And the mitochondria, if you remember from biology in school, is the powerhouse of the cell. So it's responsible for producing ATP in the body, energy. And I don't wanna to go too nerdy or scientific into it because truth be told, <laughs> I don't bore myself with all the details. But essentially these artificial lights and blue lights, especially around the evening time, it impacts our mitochondrial health and it just makes us feel sluggish. It makes our sleep quality poorer. We don't tap into that restorative sleep as much. So, Problem pointed out, <laughs> solution, that's what you're here for. So what I personally do, I have these blue light blocking glasses. Now you can get some that block like 100% of the blue light and they've got like a red lens, a ready orange lens. Now they're quite expensive. I have some, which I won't link below, but you can find ones reasonably priced and they block like 60% of the light. But what I actually prefer to do is just an hour or so before bed, I'll just turn off my lamp 
So I've got a lamp that's like a yellowy orange hue, so it's not too um, high in blue light anywhere. But I'll just turn that off and I'll chill in bed. And that way I'm not having bright lights on. And it's make it's letting my body know it's time to unwind and it's not it's not like stimulating me and it's not high in blue light. And also on my phone, if I need to like check my phone for anything. Then I have a, like a red screen filter, so it filters out a lot of the blue light. I'll link down below the video I used. Um, it works for iPhone. But essentially it makes the screen red and there's hardly any blue light. And it takes a while to get used to, like a day or two. It will look really weird. But honestly, it's improved my sleep so much. So just be conscious of the light. Because if you think about it, if we were out in nature, in the tropics, by 6 or 7 p.m., it's dark. <laughs> Maybe you'd have firelight or candlelight which is different, that's not artificial. You can by all means have that close to the bed and it won't disrupt your sleep. It actually has a naturally calming effect. But these artificial lights, just gotta do our best, no stress, but just an hour or so before bed, just, uh, just avoid the stimulation. And this actually links in quite nicely into my third point. Anyone would think I'm like a Hollywood script writer. <laughs> but no, on a, on a serious note, this links into my third point, which is to have an evening, unwind and wind down routine is so essential so once you flick off the blue lights and the artificial lights i'd say at least 45 minutes to an hour before bed that's when you kind of you just take a chill pill <laughs> which is hard for a lot of us i, I appreciate that but you do something non-stimulating because our brain is it's an amazing amazing i was going to say machine but it's, it transcends all machinery it's just an amazing organ in the body but there's got to be a little switch off so what i personally enjoy doing is i listen to something um kind of i guess you could say like spiritual so either from someone like sad guru or alan watts just something chill something that kind of just calms me you know those kind of people who are like peaceful and when you listen to they kind of make you feel sleepy and like calm not because they're boring just because they're so chill and zen and <laughs> all that good stuff so yeah something like that some evenings if i'm feeling like i want a bit of comedy i listen to a bit of comedy there's one comedian called jimmy carr he's really crude and rude who i used to listen to a lot <laughs> he's quite funny very rude though so um yeah maybe look for someone with a bit less profanity <laughs> but yeah something that is chill something that helps you unwind if you've got a partner i don't know maybe you could do something relaxing together. I don't know what that would entail, but yeah, essentially just something that you find relaxing. It's so unique and individualized, but I wouldn't recommend watching Netflix, even if you find that relaxing because you've got the blue light. Could put a filter on your screen, but what I've found is I often dream about those kind of things and they play on my subconscious mind. So I'd refrain from kind of screens if you can, just listen to something chill, maybe meditate, could read a book if your lamp's not too uh, high in blue light it's not like too bright just whatever works best for you I just think it's so essential to unwind oh and also just another quick note on that topic I like planning tomorrow the night before so oftentimes we're like worried about what the next day is going to entail we're like oh I've got to do this this and that tomorrow or maybe we're thinking about the past but what I like doing is just a quick like to-do list or running through in my head the kind of things I want to achieve the next day. And that way you kind of, your conscious mind takes a bit of a back seat. Like, it's like, okay, everything's sorted for the next day. I can just chill now, I can relax. And once you've got that either written down or planned out mentally or in your phone with the red light filter on, then it just puts your mind at ease and it's so much easier to relax. And just that way you wake up the next day with like, a real intention and I, I really enjoy doing that personally and yeah just going to quickly reel off some more bonus tips so on that note intention I think it's so important to have a sense of purpose you've got to have something to look forward to the next day there's got to be a real drive or a burning sense of purpose and passion for the next day because you could do all these things right but if you don't want to wake up tomorrow like if you're not looking forward to it, it will impact your sleep quality. And even if you sleep the best, you have the best night's sleep in the world, you're not gonna be motivated to jump out of bed and you're not gonna feel rested and restored. 
So you've got to have something outside of yourself, whether that's helping a family member, helping a friend, helping others, whatever it is, whether it's just playing a sport you enjoy, whether it's meeting up with a friend, I don't know. It's got to be something to look forward to. Just give yourself one thing to look forward to for the next day. And that's going to energize you because food gives us energy, sleep gives us energy, but there's things that transcend that. And having a sense of purpose and like passion and like joy for life, you know, that's priceless. You can't, you can't do that with any of these habits. It's got to come internally. And that takes time. Like I appreciate it takes time. For me, it took a little while. I was kind of feeling a bit lost. I quite like the concept from the East called Ikigai. And I'll put on screen now a picture, but essentially you just find the overlap of what like the world needs, what you love doing, what you can help others with. There's like four categories, I'll put it on screen now. But honestly, that if you're feeling like a bit directionless, that, that little chart and a lot of planning and introspection, that will help you out in that regard. And another great one is getting out in nature and also viewing sunlight. If you can view sunlight early in the morning, if, if you're like into the health space, <laughs> you probably heard Andrew Huberman talking about the benefits of getting sunlight early in the morning. But it's true because it sets your circadian rhythm. It lets you know, like, it lets your body know it's time to be awake. And then come evening time, your body's more likely to know it's time to wind down. So when we're out here, there's so many tens of thousands of lux, which is like a unit of brightness. Whereas when you're indoors, even with like bright lights, it's nowhere near as bright as the sun, even on a cloudy day. Now I'll put on screen now, like the comparison between like being indoors, cloudy day and like a sunny day or something like that. So you can appreciate like just how much more bright it is outside. But yeah, it's really powerful. And for me personally, on days where I'm out in nature for like a couple of hours, then like I sleep like a baby and like the fresh air, just so many benefits. It's just calming being in nature. And even if you're in a city or something, just on your lunch break, if you work, just go out to a park or have a little walk, like some wherever they plant some trees. I know they try and recreate nature in the city. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of cities, but you know, you've got to do the best you can with what you've got. And yeah, whether it's before work, after work, lunch break, there's, there's always an opportunity to get your feet out on the ground. Grounding also helps for sleep. But yeah, there's just a multitude of things you can do. And you just got to focus on what you can control and empower yourself because there's a lot we can't do, which I fully understand, but we just got to focus on what we can directly control. Oh, and something else, <laughs> I keep thinking of new bonus tips that I alluded to earlier, is to do with caffeine and stimulants. So ideally, I wouldn't recommend having these at all because they wear out your kidneys and adrenal glands. But if you're going to indulge in like coffee or, you know, something stimulating, have it early, earlier in the day, because caffeine has a half-life. So it's still in your system at nighttime, especially if you drink it in the afternoon. And that really affects your sleep and your energy because you can't have something for nothing in this life. Like if you take a stimulant like caffeine, it ramps things up initially, but then you get that crash. So I'm not a big fan of stimulants, but I'm not gonna go into it too much because I appreciate everyone's got to have like a little vice or a little cheat thing they do. But yeah, in terms of diet, if you can eat at like 4 p.m. and you go to bed at like 10, you're gonna have great sleep. Like if I eat at six and I go to bed at like 10, 10 30, I definitely feel a little, a little more groggy in the morning compared to if I eat at like four and like finish eating at like half four. I feel way more rested in the morning. It's a noticeable difference and you can observe that yourself. And the biggest thing I notice is a raw vegan diet. When I eat a raw, a fully raw day, I need like a couple of hours less sleep, maybe like seven, eight hours. Whereas if I eat a cooked meal, like a heavy meal close to bed, you know, it's, um, I need at least 10 hours sleep and I still wake up feeling groggy. So on my channel, I talk about a raw vegan diet a lot and I'm super passionate about it just because of all of the areas of my life it's benefited, but you need less sleep and you wake up feeling more energized and it's amazing. And if you can finish eating your last meal later on in the day, that's truly amazing. But yeah, anyway, if you want to learn more about a raw vegan diet, then top link in the description, you can join my free community for vegans, high raw vegans, and also raw vegans who are looking to learn more about the lifestyle, lose some weight, build some lean muscle, and just optimize their health. So I'll leave that top link in the description. Anyway, peace and love.